Well, astronomers at England's University of Warwick have discovered a, a Jupiter-sized planet that's 600 light years away from Earth. Andrew Fazekas in Montreal is obviously much closer than that. He is an astronomy columnist with National Geographic. Andrew, this new planet, tell us a bit more about it. So this is a surprise to astronomers because we're talking about a planet. It's, called, it's a gas giant, similar in structure to what we see at Jupiter, about the same size, perhaps 20% larger than Jupiter. But what's interesting is that it's sitting, uh, orbiting next to a star that is only a fraction of the size of, the, of, of our own sun. So it's considered what's called the red dwarf star very small, less than half the size and mass of the sun. And this is something that's left astronomers scratching heads because according to all theories, we should not be, this kind of small star shouldn't be able to, to, uh, to host a, such a large planet. Uh -huh. And so this is going to have to cause a revision of our understanding of how planets form. And because these kind of stars called red dwarfs are the most common stars in the universe, we think that this setup of having a monster planet next to a tiny little dwarf star might be a very common occurrence in the universe at large. Wow. Let me talk about another topic that may be of interest to a lot of people, particularly people who may be involved in uh, brain research and to say, for instance, Alzheimer's disease, Andrew. There's a new study that has been done by scanning the brains of astronauts that showing the effects of space travel. Is there any correlation that perhaps scientists can, you know, perhaps make between the effects of space travel on a human brain and what happens to a, a, a brain in the later stages of, of, of life here on Earth? Definitely, there's a lot of correlation. The, I, the, the platform of, of zero gravity that the space station offers and long-term space flight offers um, is very unique in terms of, of being able to understand the human body and particularly the brain. Now, this new study coming out this, this week shows that there are indeed changes in the brain, in, the, in how the brain is positioned in this human skull over a long-term space fight. And in fact, it, it seems to move upward in the skull, inside the skull. And this uh, basically changes the cerebral spinal fluid that covers the brain and causes pressure inside the brain to develop. And many astronauts who go for at least six months and more in, in space, living and working in space for a long duration, experience this kind of pressure in the brain when they return, there's even symptoms that are visible. So these kind of wow. studies that are being done over long-term space right are now going to be looked at in terms of how it can be applied to our understanding of brain diseases that occur here on Earth. As always, Andrew Fazekas, astronomy columnist with National Geographic. So good to speak with you, Andrew. Thank you. My pleasure. Clear skies.